My name is Virginia, and I live on the edge of the forest. <laughs> well, kind of. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, is there something going on? Today, I am here to talk to you about... Is this... Can you hear? Do these bother you? Do they bother me? I am here to talk to you today about a television miniseries that came out 22 years ago this week. And why does it have such a chokehold on me? Why are there scenes that I absolutely cannot get out of my head? Why is there a fandom that is still active? And I will talk about it later, but like so cute and charming. Um, why haven't we gotten a sequel? What is this? Why am I immediately friends with anyone who has ever liked this show? We're diving into the world of the 10th Kingdom. This is a show that came out, it was five episodes long, came out on NBC in 2000. It ran from February to March and each episode was an hour and a half and it was great. I'm gonna explain the plot in a second but basically um, it I think had like a pretty high viewership the first episode like 14 million people or something like that. I guess that it didn't get enough viewership to garner a sequel even though the director is like on board he hinted like he already has told us what the sequel is gonna be about. It never got made and it was just such a fun time. I'm actually going to be doing a reaction to it. I'm gonna be re-watching it because when I went home this past year um, I got my my DVD. It's like on multiple discs. Like we're talking this is a long and old TV series. And so we're gonna watch them together if you are interested. It's obviously gonna be clipped for copyright, but if you just want to try and experience it with me, um, I'm gonna post that at some point. It's gonna take me a while. It's a long mini series. But what is The Tenth Kingdom about and why do I feel like people nowadays, especially you guys who watch this channel, would love it? Here we go. Our story begins in New York City where we meet Tony and Virginia, um, a father-daughter duo. They clearly have a very strange relationship. The dad is kind of checked out and then we have Virginia who is just kind of struggling. She's a waitress but like clearly she has these big dreams but she also has this kind of she has like a lot of emotional baggage, which the show unpacks, I think, quite well. And a lot of that stems from um, her mother and Tony's wife leaving them when Virginia was quite young. The other part of our story is happening in an alternate dimension, I guess, um, at the Snow White Memorial Prison, where the evil queen who tried to kill Snow White, she is being held for life, I suppose. The Troll King and his children are helping her escape. During this escape, she is going to basically ruin the crown prince's life. So the I think it's the great-grandson of Snow White is the crown prince. He will become king soon. And the evil queen has this plan to switch Prince Wendell with her magical golden retriever. Stay with me. The plot is ridiculous, but once you get into it, you're into it. She takes her magical golden retriever and when they touch, they switch places. So now Prince Wendell is in the body of a dog and the dog is in the body of Prince Wendell. Easy. She will just kill the dog, aka the real prince, and now she has a literal golden retriever in the prince's body and she can control him and make him do whatever she wants. She can take over the kingdom, right? Great plan, except the dog version of Prince Wendell escapes, runs off, accidentally jumps through a magic mirror, and where does he land? Central Park, right in front of Virginia's bike as she's trying to get to work one night. This is how they meet. She accidentally hits the dog because she's a good person. She's like, oh my God, is this dog okay? The dog ends up following her to work and she lets him like stay in the kitchen so that she can like check, is this dog okay? You know, but like capitalism, she can't miss work. In the meantime, the evil queen sends the troll children and wolf through the magic mirror to go collect the dog so that she can like finish the deed. She just wants to kill the dog. That's all this movie is about. 
And so obviously then Virginia and Tony get wrapped up in this plot that takes them all through the Nine Kingdoms. Um, n none of it, other than the first episode, really takes place in New York City. So some of the reasons why I think that you would love it, if you aren't already sold on that really weird pitch, because I don't want to explain too much of the plot because it's better if you go in blind, but one critic who was actually talking negatively about the show, but I think it's a little bit of a positive. This show is that really weird borderline of like, it's not necessarily kid friendly. Kind of like how Disney shows often put like jokes that are a little over kids' heads so that even adults watching it will kind of chuckle, you know? Um, it has that element to it where it's a little childish for adults. I mean, it's like fairy tales, you know? Um, but it's a it's definitely not a kids show. It's this very strange in between. It's got a really cute romance that is not necessarily enemies to lovers, but like when they meet, their first interaction is he is trying to eat the girl's grandma. So take that as you will. It really spins the fairy tales in a very funny way. For example, Cinderella is 200 years old. We don't know why she has lived so long, but she's like, broken inside like it's the fairy tales are all a little bit darker and all a little bit stranger um they pull on a lot of not the super popular fairy tales while i was researching for this video i found this website that i will put in the description box called tvtropes.org they put a list of like all of the tropes that are in the 10th kingdom and they are so funny it's definitely got some spoilery in there so like unless you want to be a little bit spoiled don't read them yet they're so funny but honestly like actually really good if you are writing a tv show or even a book um they talk about these like hyper specific tropes that i never even thought of but are so true they're really funny um please go read just go read the list it's a great time another thing that is a great time is this list which i will also link down below um the fandom wiki wrote a list explaining each of the kingdoms because in this other dimension there are nine kingdoms and they're all broken into kind of different fairy tales um and i thought that they were broken up so well um, just the world building in general was really fun for me. They also filmed this, it took them like six months, and they filmed this all in like central Europe, so a lot of like Austria, um, a little bit of Switzerland I guess. It's beautiful. They actually had a pretty big budget for this film, for this miniseries, so it's just gorgeous. But I'm gonna read you a couple of the kingdoms, just so you know like the details that went into the world building. So there's the first kingdom, Queen Cinderella. The citizens are snobbish and romantic, falling in love and marrying at an alarming rate. Chronic divorces have led to an abundance of wicked step-siblings. Um, the second kingdom, the wolf kingdom. It's a land of wild forests and is overrun by dreaded wolves. It is full of pie makers, cooks, and gingerbread cottages. Queen Red Riding Hood III rules the north, and Gretel the Great rules the south. Civil wars have left the kingdom short of males and dominated by adolescent girls and their grandmothers. Like, there's so many, key, like, details in it, and it's so, ah, I just think it's so funny. One thing that I will point out, so I haven't watched this in a, quite a long time, so when we do the my reaction, that will be the first time that I've watched it in a, in a very long time, but one thing that I do remember and that I do want to point out is that this was a miniseries made in 2000. It is white. <laughs> Watching it like quite a few years after the first time I watched it, I watched it when I was in fourth grade. Watching it now, it's apparent. <laughs> just do with that knowledge what you will, like just go, Letting you, letting you know, it's a white show. But like 2000 whiteness aside, scenes that I adore. First of all, the opening sequence. My God, if you aren't gonna watch this show, please, it's on YouTube, just watch the opening sequence. It's one of those things where I do not skip the intro every single time. It is so good. Um, it won an Emmy, actually. I believe the soundtrack also was either like nominated or it won an Emmy. The opening sequence is stunning. Please watch the intro. And I sing it all the time. Another tidbit that is hilarious, the trolls. 
are obsessed with the Bee Gees. When they come to Central Park, they accidentally find an abandoned boombox, and the boombox can only play this like one tape of the Bee Gees. And so throughout the show, no matter what they're doing, for some reason, they carry their boombox with them, and they are always singing the Bee Gees. The song, it concerns a deadly fever that only strikes on Saturdays. And I don't know why, like who thought to put that in there, but it is such a funny detail. It just, mm, they stay in character. Like these fairy tale characters stay in character the whole time. It's funny as hell. Another absolute favorite scene, Bo Peep makes an appearance. Virginia accidentally gets roped into the shepherdess competition and so she has to like show her sheep and like do all this weird stuff and one part of the competition is singing your favorite sheep song so everyone's like ba ba black sheep you know like that kind of thing virginia doesn't know any sheep songs so she starts singing do i want to spoil it she starts singing a song and she just changes the lyrics to be about sheep and i know that version better than i know the real song if you know what i'm talking about such a good song, right? There is also an incredible character, I suppose, um, that is a singing ring. Have I checked for it on Etsy and everywhere? Yes. Is it $100? Yes. Am I still tempted? But there is a singing ring and <clears throat> it sings a bunch of different songs and like, I don't know, maybe it's because I watched it at such a young age and I watched it so many times, but like the songs in this, like the sheep song, the singing rings, many songs, I know them all and I sing them all the time. Do you have songs that are stuck in your head all the time? I do. The singing ring songs like, oh, how I love to linger. Oh, I long to linger. Oh my God, like stuck in my head. Always. I want you to know if you're looking at me, the singing ring is somewhere singing in my head. I also really appreciated Snow White. Snow White is a beautiful plus size woman and the actress talks about how that was really important to her and it's just, it's this mix of, I know that I'm not selling it well mainly because I don't know how to explain it because I've lived with this series for so long but I just think it's this really funny mixture of absolute ridiculousness but there's also so much, there's, there's a lot of talk about like trust and abandonment issues and feeling worthy and feeling loved and I just thought that it did a really good job. The The main thing is the guy who plays Tony is kind of annoying so I really didn't like all of the scenes with him. <laughs> He's a lot to take but it was just I thought so cute and for people who watch this channel and love like young adult fantasy I feel like this especially if you like like Marissa Meyer who does fairy tale retellings um I just thought that this this was such an interesting take on it and like I said I mean I've I've lived with it I've loved it for now 22 years I saw it in 2000 I was in fourth grade in 2001 oh my god I feel like people who have watched the whole series love it um like the one critic that I found who said that it wasn't that great he said he only watched two episodes so I feel like if you are a person who has watched the whole thing, you have you have absolutely loved it. And I don't know why it has such a hold on us, especially because it wasn't renewed for a sequel, but Hallmark, who did the distribution for the DVDs and stuff like that, um, they had to do, they had to go back and like print more because there was such a high demand for the DVDs and it has such a high rating on like IMDB. The people who love it, love it. And the people who just felt like meh are silent. Like no, I don't think anybody hates this mini series. I guess I just want to end by talking about how sweet the fandom is. So actually right now, and I should put this in the beginning, oops. Right now there is a Facebook group um, that is like, team 10th kingdom and i found them a couple months ago i don't use facebook um but i joined this and they are so sweet and they are doing a watch week for the 22nd anniversary um and so you can just kind of like watch along and chat actually on the 27th they're going to be doing a live chat i think um if you want to join um it's just this like really wholesome cute group of people um people will just post like hey i'm i'm watching it today or like hey 
my fiance bought me a singing ring oh my, i can't tell you how jealous i was it's just super cute and like the admins end like all of their posts with huff puff which is what the wolf says and i just think it's so funny imagining people on the internet writing huff puff uh, it's lovely it's like a very healthy corner of the internet if you want to check it out um where can you watch it you can buy it on amazon on app on itunes i believe google play has it roku tv i think but they also actually have it on youtube but i would really prefer it if you paid money for it because we're still gunning for a sequel i <laughs> It could happen, you never know. Like, wouldn't that be wild? I just wanted to bring attention to this very strange, somewhat obscure miniseries. I'm so grateful for the series that we had. I would love more, but I also think that it ended kind of well. Um, like, as in, I, I'm. it didn't end on a cliffhanger, so I'm like kind of satisfied, but I'm also hungry for more, you know? Anyway, long story short, please check out The Tenth Kingdom. Um, I will maybe like next, next week, um, because again, it's a long mini series. I will post my reaction to it so you can check that out. Yeah, sound off if you're a Tenth Kingdom fan. They actually also made a book version just to tie this back into books. They did actually make a just a novelization I had that thing until it literally fell apart. It was my go-to airplane book because I could just open it to any page and start reading. Like, I absolutely loved it. It literally broke in half. It was a giant paperback. Um, and it just snapped in half and, and disintegrated. They don't make it anymore. Ugh. Um, but yeah, so it, it does tie back to books somehow. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that to your attention as it is the 22nd anniversary and the fandom is cute okay and i even have this is from the shepherdess competition i have a sticker it made me so happy when i found that on etsy but anyway i'm going to leave you um apologies for not having a video last week but i have been reading giant ass books and i don't know why i have been reading books that are over 800 pages long and they have been taking over my life i will we will be back to regular programming soon i've just had my life taken over by massive books so um please watch the 10th kingdom i love you all so much let me know your thoughts um why didn't it get a sequel when are we getting one please okay <laughs> bye i long to linger on your sweetheart's finger it is a singing ring sir